one. We're just uh, getting started. We're not starting officially right away. We just uh, want to make sure that you all are connected and that you can hear us just fine. Uh, we still have room for more people as they come on. I don't want them to feel like they're missing out on anything. So I uh, hope everybody is doing well. I live in Western Maryland and it's finally starting to cool off just a little bit. Fall is in the air. We have some tree uh, leaves on the ground. The leaves have already changed color, but there's still a lot of greenness out there. So um, let me take a look at our questions and see. I hear some people can hear me, so that's good. We have a connection. Yay! Well, I hope you all are excited because I'm really excited. I've been waiting for this all day long, not to say, not to mention the past two months. <laughs> so we're going to have a good time tonight. So we'll just take a little pause here and let some more people sign on. And when it's the top of the hour, we will officially start. So that's about two minutes from now. I have some more comments that the sound is good. So thank you for letting me know that we have a connection. If you do have any technical problems, we're not the best people to help you. Um, you would have to contact uh, Citrix, which is affiliated. It is GoToWebinar, and their phone number I put in the chat box out to everyone, but it's 855-352-9000. So I have some more people typing in that the sound is good. Anybody want to tell me where you're from? Someone says no sound. <laughs> Movie not moving. Oh, okay, that's all right. You can hear me uh, type, and that's that's all that is. We got someone from Ohio, Arizona, Massachusetts, Maryland. All right, hoo hoo! <laughs> I'm all the way out in the western, western, western part of Maryland. Like you can't get any further west. Um, good sound. South Carolina, Oregon. Good. All around the United States. Anyone from out of the out of the United States? Panama, Canada. Yay! Well, this can be addicting. I'll be watching this. <laughs> I better get started. It's my sundial actually says bedtime right now, but I'm ready to get this party started. Aren't you? So welcome everyone to the Sewing Online with Saki webinar. My name is Michelle Umloff and I am your host for tonight and I'm just really excited. Everyone here at Saki, uh, we're just really pleased to have such a great turnout and such interest in our webinars. We have a fantastic program lined up for you tonight and you're going to see some of my a uh, quirky sense of humor show through if you haven't noticed by now. The uh, title of this program is Get Off Your Flat Projects with 3D Embellishments. So that's just part of my little quirky sense of humor. So let's see. We have some people that are new to our our webinar. We have some people that are new to webinars in general and I just want to give you an overview about how this is going to work. Um, after we finish this evening, it's, this, it's tonight for me, um, the rec we'll work tomorrow morning getting the recording on our website. Uh, you'll also find on our website a PDF to this presentation and we'll have these other items available on the website. The thing that's going to take a little longer is to uh, do a the questions and answers. I actually do fill out a uh, PDF document for you so you can uh, read all the questions and answers 
or questions that were asked this evening. So if you ask a question and it doesn't get answered, it will later on, and that takes a little bit of time to construct. By Friday, you will receive an email from us that will give you a direct link to this special area on the Salky website where you will get all of this information. But if you uh, want to watch our progress over the next couple days, you can just go to Salky.com and under Education and Events, click on that, the men menu will drop down and look for Sewing Online with Salky Webinars and in there you'll locate our webinar and can uh, start to access some of this information. The recording we hope will be up there tomorrow morning or, or, or tomorrow afternoon. Again, if you experience any kind of technical issues, please contact Citrus which is GoToWebinar. They are the masters at this technical stuff and their phone number is 855-352-9002. We got a full evening planned for you. You're going to meet the fiber artist Heidi Lund. She is incredibly talented and she's a lot of fun. I really enjoy her company when I met her earlier this year. And we have some techniques to share with you um, that's going to teach you how to do 3D embellishments and you're going to gain more confidence if you haven't tried free motion sewing or free motion quilting. We're going to do a little bit of machine embroidery. We have lots of eye candy inspiration, there's a little bit of humor, and there's some prizes, uh, some surprises uh, wrapped in here as well, including door prizes. So it's going to be fun. I have to break the ice because around my house we've had a lot of confusion uh, these past two months. To me, this is Heidi. This is the apple of my eye. And um, our social media coordinator, Kelly Nagel, sent me an email message one day and she says, do you have a current picture of Heidi? And I'm like, wow, I wonder what she needs a picture of Heidi for. I mean, I take a picture of her just about every day. <laughs> so it didn't occur to me that she was referring to Heidi Lund. So I even like Heidi's little smile here. So without further ado, Heidi Lund is joining us from the West Coast. It's such a pleasure to have her join us. I'll tell you a little bit about Heidi. Um, she is a five-time Salky Thread Challenge winner. Uh, she, uh, her garments and art quilts have exhibited nationally as well as internationally. Um, some of her garments have also been featured in the Bernina Fashion Show. And she, her work has been published where she's contributed to books, magazines. Uh, she's been featured in the Quilting Arts Calendar. She's also um, has some projects in our Salky books uh, that we'll tell you about a little later. And she even has a Salky thread collection. So please uh, let me introduce to you Heidi Lund. Are you out there, Heidi? Hi, Michelle. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. Well, thank you for being on here. It's going to be such a pleasure to hear uh, you present your award-winning technique uh, to us. Now, remember, I'm your Vanna White, so when you're ready for me to uh, switch the slide, just let me know. I love this new headshot of yours. I love the quilt in the background. It's very nice. Thank you. Did you make that? <laughs> <laughs> I did make that. That uh, quilt uh, actually was in Houston a year ago and uh, is part of the Celebrate Spring exhibit. And that's one of my leaf pieces with my hand-dyed fabrics on the background and, of course, stitched with silky thread. Uh, I remember watching you quilt last year at or earlier this year at Poyallup, and just to watch you is so relaxing. I really enjoyed that. So are you ready for me to go to the next slide, the first slide for I, you? I am. All right. So the slide that Michelle brought up is it talks about where you can find this technique if you'd like to uh, try it yourself, if you, and if you forget how uh, what we talked about this evening. So Sulky has a couple of 
uh, successful stabilizing books. And this particular technique for the three-dimensional leaves, at least, is in the supplement book, which is called Pokey Secrets to Successful Stabilizing. So um, for doing this technique, which is kind of, you can see faintly in the background of these PowerPoint slides, uh, which are the three-dimensional leaves, you're going to need um, probably my one of my favorite supply besides thread from Pokey, and I use a ton of it, is the Solvi Stabilizer, and for this technique, I've been using the Fabry Solvi, and uh, to make it more successful so that even a beginner can do it, I have you using either Organza as, or Tool as your base layer. Uh, you'll need a permanent marker, and I use those cute little seven-inch uh, spring hoop. Um, I, you can use, if you have those little wooden embroidery hoops, the little German ones that fit under the, the needle of your sewing machine. However, um, a lot of those, I'm fine. If you put it on too tight, um, just make sure to loosen the tension a little bit on that spring because what it likes to do is it likes to stretch your organza or tool and then it stretches the solvi. And so as your needle goes up and down, back and forth, depending on how fast you sew, it likes to punch little holes in it. So that's why I tend to use the spring tension hoop. It's not as big a tension on your uh, piece of fabric, which your fabric's going to be classed as your organza or your tool. And um, so I use the Sulky's Cotton Blendables. I, I also use the rayons. I'm going to throw that out there, and we'll see some pieces later on where I've used both. Uh, sharp pointed scissors and a little warm water to rinse the salvia out. I think we're good for next slide, Michelle. Awesome. So this slide talks a little bit about how to set up your sewing machine. Uh, for, you can do this in a machine that you, uh, for those of you that don't have a machine that can lower the feed dogs, what I teach in class is that you can take a business card and punch a little hole in it where the needle goes up and down and you actually tape that business card over your feed dogs. So if you look at this picture where it shows, I think this is Michelle's machine that um, has the free motion foot on it, it looks like. You can see her feed dogs, which are the little teeth items that are in those kind of black areas where the lines are. The Her feed dogs are lowered, but there are some machines out there that they have trouble lowering those. And they could be an older machine. I've had people do this technique on a featherweight. And they have taped the business card over that area, and you just tape it down with masking tape or the blue tape that lifts off really easy. And you can stitch away. So use a free motion foot. You, almost every machine out there now, including the old Singer Featherweights, you can get a free motion foot for them. Uh, I tend to, uh, I, I sew on Bernina, uh, and I tend to lower or reduce the top tension of my sewing machine a little bit. Depending on which Bernina I'm using, whether I'm using my Ambassador machine or whether I'm using uh, the machine that I've won from the Sulky Challenge, um, I'm usually between a two and a half and a three on the settings, so if that helps you with that type of brand of machine. Also, with, I've sewn on Janome with this technique, and it's the same thing, a little bit lower, uh, uh, reduce the top tension, and um, select straight stitch to begin with. So the needle on this slide, it talks about inserting a 9014 top stitch needle, embroidery, or quilting needle. Where if uh, Michelle, if you'll go to the next slide, because I think I'll delve a little bit more into about needles. If you're going to be using, oh, you changed the slide on me. This is cute. Oh, she's laughing in the background. Can you tell? Um, for this technique, we're going to be using a 30-weight cotton blendable. If you want to use the 12-weight, which is what I sometimes do, which gives you a little thicker stitch on the top, you can thread your machine with a 12-weight and then put 30 weight in your bobbin, but you're going to have to change your needle size. So you're going to have to go to probably a 100 top stitch or a jeans needle. So, But back to this, uh, setting up your machine for free motion to do this technique, um, go ahead and load, um, again, the 30 weight in the top and the bobbin, and stay with the 9014. You're flipping back and forth. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, th I, was trying, I, I thought you wanted me to go back. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's all right. So um, that's how you set up your machine. 
and I see a Michelle from your machine, you have a top loading bobbin, so we know this works in that type of a machine as well as a front loading bobbin. So go ahead and go to the next slide. So this example in the picture, it shows the Fabri-Solvi product. You can see it almost looks like a really thin, lightweight interfacing, and it more is like a fabric. And for those of you that are used to the, the other uh, great Solvi products that are out there, you can use them for this technique as well. Believe me, when I started doing my leaves, Fabri-Solvi wasn't around, so I was using uh, regular Solvi and Super Solvi, and you can even use Ultra Solvi, and there's lots of other, you can use Paper Solvi. But um, I use for for myself a fine point marker and uh, a leaf template, at, or so a leaf template, you can use the book which has templates on it in the book, or you can take a leaf that you find in the outdoors and lay it on a copy machine and it will actually photograph the, the copy will be a photograph of the shape of a leaf. There are all kinds of ways to get your leaf shapes. So um, you can buy, there are books out there that are copyright free images of leaves and things on it. So you can use those as well to actually use a marker to um, trace the leaf an outline and what I use is several 11 and a half, 8 and a half by 11 pieces of the Fabri Solvi which is shown here. So in adhering that um, you'll see also um, there it shows sticky Fabri Solvi which is another option and I've found for classes it works well for me to hand out to my students because they don't necessarily always remember to bring their small hoop that we talked about. So sticky fabric salvia is an option to draw your leaf on, and then it peels off, and you can actually stick it to the tool. The other option is um, also using the Sulky KK2000, the temporary spray. You can spray that to your organdy or tool, and then lay your fabric salvia or regular salvia on top of it. It'll adhere it for you so that it slides into your hoop easy. OK, Michelle, I think we can go forward on the slide. So this shows an image of where I have used a piece of organza, that's the uh, fine green fabric that you see next to the hoop on the outline. I have a piece of the Fabri Solvi that's uh, laid inside my hoop. When you're using a spring tension hoop or a regular hoop, the hoop, the round part of it, lays down on the facing, of the, uh, facing your table first. You lay your fabric over it, so in this case I used the organza. Then I laid my piece of fabric solvi on top of that, and then I take my ring that has the spring tension and push that down into the hoop itself. That holds it all together into one nice neat package, and you can actually pick it up and move it over to your machine. It's not a problem. And um, this picture shows, thank you, Michelle. You can see that I've taken that hoop over to my machine, and I have um, how I do these leaves to start with, and I do this the same way when I'm working on fabric leaves, is, uh, besides organza leaves, is I straight stitch around the leaf with my feed dogs down, and this is all free motion. I don't have, you don't have to worry about what width your machine is when it's in straight stitch. So I straight stitch around the leaf, I get to the top of the leaf, then I change my machine to a zigzag, which is your free motion satin stitch. And remember, because it's free motion, you're controlling your stitch width of, or excuse me, the length of the stitch of the machine. So the slower you move your machine through that process, you're going to have more of a fill line, more of a satin stitch as you go around the leaf. I've actually changed the width on my machine to a 2.5 or a 3.0 uh, width. That is the width of the stitch that you see that satin stitch on there, how wide it's going to be going around that leaf. OK, Michelle? You can see in this example, that when I've gone around my leaf, I remember I did the straight stitch first, 
and I came back to the top of the leaf, I switched to free motion zigzag, the satin stitch, and I went around my leaf satin stitch. And by the way, folks, I'm not turning my hoop when I do this. You can see if you go from the top of the leaf and follow that satin stitch down to the first point of the leaf where I go back in, I'm actually going sideways a little bit satin stitch. But it's still doing a fill. It's still connecting that layer of fabric and fabric solving together. So when I get to the top of the next point where I'm coming back down, it, it goes back out to a flat uh, satin stitch. And then you can see as the next point where I go in a little bit on the leaf, it is still a satin stitch, only it's a little bit sideways. I found this works better than constantly moving my hoop around, and I, ha I get the same great effect. So in this picture, you can see I've gone all the way around the leaf satin stitch. When I get to the top of the leaf, I switch without even taking my needle up, because my needle's in the down position. I switch back to straight stitch, and then I fill in my veins of the leaf. And this is done free motion. I'm sorry on this picture I didn't include where you can actually draw in the veins of that leaf that you want. Um, when you've done, you know, thousands, I want to say millions, but that's not the case, but thousands and thousands of leaves, I don't have to draw things in anymore. I just kind of uh, do the fill in. So that's how I have the veins inside. Okay, Michelle? So this slide shows um, when you'll see some of the samples a little bit later on. This is the back side of my piece of fabric. This is where I've gone. It's just so you can see the different ways to fill a leaf in. This particular sample that is being shown is actually not the cotton blendable thread. This is a variegated silky rayon thread. It happens to be one of the variegated greens, one of the colors I, I really love in the, that goes from dark green to a light green to almost a silvery white green before it goes back to the other color again. So this is the actual back side of the hoop once I've taken that piece of fabric out of the hoop. I make as many leaves as I can to fill in that hoop, and then I unhoop my fabric, move the hoop a little bit over, and hoop it back up again, and continue to fill in the leaves. You can see on this particular picture that I've done some leaves that kind of look like an eye shape, some leaves that are my um, my design of a free motion leaf, and I've done separate fills on them. Some have the actual vines, uh, veins of the leaf that are filled in. Other ones are filled in with circles, so just free motion circles. I've done other ones that are just filled in with straight lines, kind of a grid work. It just is, um, when it washes out, I kind of want a different look to each leaf. So this is, again, a picture of just the process repeated over and over again uh, for my leaves. Okay, Michelle. So your next step, once you've filled a sheet of leaves, or as many leaves as you want to make. And believe me, when I'm working on leaves and I have a quilt or a wall hanging or a garment in mind, before I even get to this step, I'm doing as many as I can. So I may have six sheets of leaves for me to be able to cut out uh, when I get to the cutout phase. Because so I go from machine to where I can move away from the machine and do something else, maybe turn the TV on and watch the news or sit out on the patio and trim leaves. Um, I, I'm working with several sheets. Uh, I tend to use a um, what they call a jelly roll pan. It's a baking pan that has a little bit of a, like a flat baking cookie sheet, only it has a little lip on it. Those sit really good on your lap, and then you can sit and cut away all your shears and fabric solvy and just leave yourself with the leaves like this picture is. I use really sharp scissors. There's lots of great scissors out there, so I have no real preferred brand. Um, the one thing that I can say is be careful not to cut too close to that satin stitching uh, because uh, once you clip it, the, the nice thing is, is remember how I had you do a straight stitch around the leaf and then I had you switch to zigzag to go over it? Part of the thing is if you accidentally clip some of this satin stitch because 
the rest of the satin stitch is all held over the top of that straight stitch, I find it doesn't unravel as easy if I just do a straight stitch. Wouldn't you hate to have done all that work on the leaf and then come back to it and here you clip the spot and then have it start to unravel on you? So that, I, I realize some people feel like that straight stitch at the beginning is an extra step. I've just kind of found from experience that it's kind of nice to be there. So, okay, Michelle, I think we're ready for the next slide. So after you've cut out your leaves, the next step is to rinse them out in water. For the purpose of the book that I wrote for, for, for um, the supplements book, I just show, of course, a little Pyrex dish with me rinsing uh, the leaf out in warm water. But really, to be honest, what I do at home is I fill my little bathroom sink up and I, I put the stopper in it and fill it up with warm water. I drop my pile of leaves or whatever else I've done in Salvi in there. I walk away from it for about 10 minutes and do some other things. I come back to it and I usually do this a couple of times. I'm sorry I didn't tell you that, Michelle, but look at your slides. But I, uh, depending on the type of Solvi product that you're using, if you're using Super Solvi or Ultra Solvi, you're going to want to do this a few times to get all the Solvi product out of it. With the Fabri Solvi, you can do it once or twice, and it's pretty much out of the product. I pull, once my leaves have been rinsed out and they don't feel, you can tell. When you're rinsing them out, they have kind of this gummy feel as that stabilizer is rinsing away. and um, you can tell when they're clean because they don't have that feel. They're not going to stick to your fingers. And I don't mean stick in a bad way. But um, they're going to be nice and, and kind of a light feeling. What will be heavy, especially as if you use the blendable thread, they'll, they'll actually feel nice and wet to you. So I actually grab a handful of them and I wring them out and I lay out in a flat area to dry. So another, another time when I want leaves to be curly and stuff, sometimes I won't flatten them out all the way. And I actually, because I'm in my rest bathroom, to rinse these out in the sink or in the kitchen, I lay a towel over the edge of the sink area. And you can curl these leaves in different ways that you want them to or let them curl up on you to dry. And then they'll already be uh, kind of not flat, if you may. Okay, Michelle? All right, Heidi, we'll give you a little break and let you wet your whistle while we do our first door prize drawing. As you can see, we have a nice package for the lucky winner. I want to point out, please send me an email at saukiwebinar at gmail.com. That goes directly to me. And um, you're going to receive a copy of the real thread chart as well as the stabilizer sampler package, which has has one sheet of every uh, Salky stabilizer that is available, that, and both of those are, are very handy references to have in your sewing room. We'll also uh, give you a pack, a six pack of the Salky cotton petite thread, and I just wanted to point out uh, or talk about the stick and carve. This is a really neat product, but to be honest, if you have sticky fabric solvi at home, it's the same thing. This is just packaged um, and marketed for uh, doing things such as carving pumpkins or other types of hard types of fruit or vegetables such as watermelon and gourds and things like that. And um, also in the stick and carve package there are instructions as well as um, information where you can download uh, some patterns uh, to do some of these really cool designs. So with Halloween coming up in about a month or so, um, this is a great giveaway for us to give to you. So I went ahead and uh, drew the name while Heidi was talking, and our winner for the first door prize is Anita Shirts. Are you out there, Anita? Like I said, um, Anita, all you have to do is send me an email message at saukiwebinar at gmail.com, 
and we will find uh, get in touch with you and send this package out to you as soon as we get your information. So congratulations, Anita. I'm trying to multitask here. That's why I have a little bit of a pause. So I want to go over our sales special for you this evening. I know a lot of you are shoppers, and some of you are probably market, uh, multitasking as well. I'm going to be featuring a, an embroidery design a little later. Uh, so because of that, you will receive 35% off your entire purchase from the Salky Embroidery Club, and you have to use the code SULWEB35. That's the code for the Salky Embroidery Club. It, as you know, we have uh, shopping available on Salky.com, and the red link that you see there, you might want to jot this down. You'll see the slide again a little later, but that will take you directly to our sales page. Um, and, it, the, and when I say sales page, it's going to have all of the products that we talked about this, this evening. We added a few things, so definitely um, by tomorrow morning, it will be totally up to date. And if you use the code SULWEB30, you will get 30% off a $50 or more purchase. So these are really great offers. And I just want to mention that the cotton blendables thread is something that's not available at the uh, large stores. These codes do expire one week from now, and that is, that's a really long offer. Um, they expire Tuesday, September 23rd at 3 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So Heidi, I'm going to kick it back over to you. Are you ready? I'm ready, Michelle. Can you guys hear me okay? We got you loud and clear. Now you're going to share some eye candy with us. I am, but I have to do a quick shout out to my girlfriend Candy who just she popped up on my screens and she says, awesome webinar. So nice to hear you, Candy, even though I can't see you. So she's in California. Yeah. Um, Anyway, this next piece that's up, it actually is not a finished piece. This is a photo from the supplements book that shows different leaves that I have made. And I have to be honest and tell you, there are sheer leaves in here. There are fused fabric leaves in here. And at least on this picture, I don't see an all thread leaf yet. So we'll get to that. But um, this is kind of... I, when I'm making um, one of the leaf medallion quilts, which is the big medallions where the leaf is kind of the focal point in the center, or when I'm working on a garment um, that I'm creating, or a bag, or I'm doing headpieces now sometimes, and anyway, I actually make what I call all my components first. So my leaves, in this case, are my components. I've, again, I've done sheer ones and fabric ones in this regard. And this is the start of a medallion piece. Uh, I made a whole bunch of samples for the Sulky National Educators. I, By the time I was done, I had done a lot of leaves. But um, when I'm starting to do embellishments, I actually kind of lay them out in the position that I like them in. I, I think what I'm trying to impart is I do everything I can by machine, as much as I can by machine before I start the handwork. And yes, there's handwork involved in these medallion pieces. But uh, in this particular picture, you can see I've laid my leaves out in kind of a circular medallion fashion. And then I'm just about ready to go back with my sewing machine, still in free motion, and pack those all down with my sewing machine. So um, I'm using my free motion foot on my Bernina, and I'm Again, the feed dogs are still dropped, and with the needle down position, I just go slowly all around the corners of all those leaves in the center. Then it kind of leaves me an area to do my embellishments um, at. So go ahead and forward the slide, Michelle. So this next slide uh, is a medallion piece that's actually finished. You can see the, let's, I always, when I work on quilts, I work, of course, from the background to the foreground going to what your eyes see. So in the background of this piece was, this was a batik piece of fabric that I did, it looks like from this piece that I did some stamping on with a, this particular stamp is one of my favorite ones because it's kind of like a feather, kind of like seaweed, 
it's actually a foam stamp that I used um, metallic Lumiere metallic paints on. And then I did my free motion leaves, which are in this piece. There are fabric leaves and fiber leaves. If you look to the lower left-hand corner, you'll see a leaf that is kind of um, orange in color. That color is actually a blendable thread. And um, that's one of my favorite colors. It's number 4003. It's called Sunset. So it goes from kind of this really great red into oranges into yellows. And it just makes a really great leaf and flowers and everything else. So um, that is done in all thread. That technique is done this almost the same way as how I just showed you from doing the um, organza leaves. Only I've made a grid work pattern and then filled it in with thread, uh, free motion on the machine, and then done the exact same thing where you cut it out and rinse out the salvi, and it's a leaf. So you also see my fabric leaves in here. I've embellished the center with a bunch of different fibers and then added beads and buttons to it. Thanks, Michelle. Sorry, so I was. Go ahead and <laughs> So the next slide, this was um, this is my fence in, the, in one of my side yards. So I have a cedar fence, which is a great place to photograph things because it, it's not the quite 18% gray that they kind of want you to have, but things look great on it. These are just a few of the sample pieces that I made for the Sulky Educators. And uh, so I don't know where each of these pieces leave. I'm sure somebody lives. I'm sure somebody out there has one of these. but. Mm -hmm. um, that is them, and I've even used, it looks like the same stamp on all the backgrounds. Okay, Michelle. So this is a close-up of the Life in the Tropics piece that is featured on the thread uh, collection that I have. I want to mention that the flowers on this piece are actually done using that sunset thread and it's using Solvi, Fabri Solvi, actually, yes, Fabri Solvi and a shear. And it's just done with that same fill in. You can see as I kind of start in the lower left hand corner of this uh, piece and work myself up the left hand side and across the top, that green flower on the bottom is actually a piece, uh, or excuse me, green leaf on the bottom, kind of bright green in the kind of center left is. Um, done using another favorite color of mine, which is the grass green. So um, that number is summer grass, excuse me, is the color name. And it's number 4018. Then the leaf next to it with kind of the gold is actually the same color as used for the flower. That's the blendables as well. Then you see I've used summer grass again on that blue leaf. And the pink one is the these are all ones out of the thread collection. So it's the um, great navy that's in there. There's, as you move up the side of it, there's hot batik, which is the pink one, the hot pink one on the fuchsia leaf. Then, of course, we've gone to grass greens again. Um, and then you'll look down as you go towards the center. That leaf there actually has, it's a sheer leaf, even though it's kind of worked into the other. As you kind of move up, there is actually that little pink leaf that's in there with the pink. That's a rayon thread. So you see that I mix rayons and cotton together depending on the look leaf that I'm kind of looking for. Part of my embellishments is I love buttons. So this piece shows a lot of buttons and how I do beading on top. And for my beading, I don't ever want to go back and rebead things. I wanted to give you all a hint that I use a product called um, Silamide beading thread. It's not a silky product, but um, they told me it was okay to share with you how I do that. So, and I bead with a John James short beading needle. I don't have a secret, so I'm trying to share it all. And of course, there's mixed fibers in there as well. Okay, Michelle, we're ready for the next slide. We're doing eye candy now. Mm -hmm. There's the Secrets to Successful Stabilizing book again that has all these techniques in there. The book has the techniques for the shear leaves, the techniques for the leaves that are the uh, fused uh, leaves, which in the last few pieces that you've seen, I've used a lot of silk, but I've also used um, different fabrics, cottons and cottons as well. And uh, it also shows 
how to do the all thread leaf. So I haven't seen this piece in a while. It's pretty, Michelle. It is very pretty. I have this color here at my house. <laughs> yeah, there's it's great navy in there. Oh, there's a close up of it. So that um, color that's on the purple leaves, that is that periwinkle's blendable. It's a really great one. So there's a really good close up on the top center of that um, color that's in the kit. Um, that's got the blues and the purples and stuff kind of all involved. So the nice thing about the blendables is they come in almost every colorway, and then they've added even more since I did this. So, okay, Michelle, we're ready. Aha. So I have to talk a little bit about more dimensions. So last year I participated. Uh, I was lucky enough to be uh, asked to participate in a show called uh, What's for Dinner? that debuted at Houston and has kind of toured with those um, Quilts Incorporated shows. This piece is a close-up of one of my Dungeness crabs that is called, um, um, I have to think about, this is Northwest Seafood Bounty. And I purposely used as many blendable thread as I could be just because they're a great fill, they have great coloring to them. And so this is my Dungeness crab of that piece. It's the close-up. He sits on a dinner plate with a he or she, the crab, sits on a dinner plate with a, another crab. And then if you go to the next slide, Michelle, there's a close-up of the clams that I made. You know, I live in the Northwest, and I grew up eating a ton of seafood. My dad was a scuba diver. I'm a scuba diver. Um, I love the beach. And so... This is just our love of seafood. So these are little steamer, what we call little manila or steamer clams. I did some lemons. The lemons that you see there are actually um, a rayon thread from Sulky. So it's a yellow and, and a white to kind of give me my lemon lines. I did a lot of this work on felt, but then I did my drawings on fabric salvi, and then I did my work with blendables and rayon thread. So the clams, even though there's blendables for the uh, darker part of the clams going sideways, then I've used a rayon thread kind of as a fill on the outside. And the same way with the mussels. I used a blendable thread, you can see in this picture, for different striping on the mussel shells. And I use a rayon thread for to kind of give me the sheen around the edges. Because, you know, after you dump those mussels out of a pan of water, they kind of have that glistening uh, feel. So let's go on to the next slide, Michelle. What else eye candy do we have? Oh, there's the Life in the Tropics thread pack. So you can see some of the different threads that are available. And this is one of the specials that you can purchase if you like. And um, they're just my favorite threads. They kind of make my heart sing. And, and uh, I love color. Well, thank you so much, Heidi. They, uh, your work is just absolutely amazing, and I love your selection of the threads. And thank you for sharing this fantastic technique with us. You're um, welcome. Patty, you're in mute right now. Would you like to come out, and is there anything that you have to say? trying to find my cursor. Patty, are you there? All right. While Patty's um, coming out, uh, I'll pull up Kelly. Kelly is our social media manager, and she's going to take a minute to talk to you about an online class that we offer, Artistry and Applique. Kelly, are you there? I sure am, Michelle. Thanks. Well, thank you. Absolutely. And uh, this particular class is near and dear to my heart because I got to create or uh, help do two of the projects in this. You know, it's such a great course because you get five different projects and they're all great applique techniques. The two that I did are topsy-turvy applique and square dance applique. Topsy-turvy is a reverse applique technique and you know, I don't know about you, but I have all these wonderful 
prints that I love the prints and I'm not sure exactly what to do with them and I would love to do a reverse applique but I didn't know exactly how to make that happen so in topsy-turvy applique we sort of show you how to do that how to use those prints and be able to turn them into reverse applique as well as doing applique with, by hand and on machine um, so it's a great that's a great one in square dance there's a couple different ways to do square dance and it's just a great it's some great techniques on how to do machine applique it's my favorite way to do applique I don't have enough time to do a lot of hand work at least hand applique so I love that and if you've ever wanted to know how to do free motion quilting this is the class for you because Eric Drexler who is the ninja of free motion he goes step by step on how to do this project how to do free motion and how to do Zen tangling which is a great new thing we also show you how to work with hard fabrics like Dupioni silk and a great table runner uh, that is it's just so quick and easy you won't even believe it it will soon become your go-to project for how to um, if you have a quick gift to make so it's a great class and uh, for $150 five classes I, I don't know how to beat that that's an awesome thing so treat yourself and start these classes and that starts on September 21st and it runs through November 2nd and if you use the code Salky APP50 that will save you the $50 um, off of this class and all of these codes are going to be repeated a little later so thank you very much for telling us about the artistry and applique Class. I actually made a jacket back using the woven table runner technique as part of my Salky Sister Challenge. So it's going to be about a year until I have the jacket back from all my other sisters. But thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Thank you. To keep in line with the technique. Hi, Michelle. I am here. I am so sorry. That's okay. I figured maybe. You <laughs> Is there anything that you want to? No, bring I up? wasn't sleeping. I was not sleeping. My mouse stopped working. I think the cat got the mouse. I, I don't know, but it wouldn't work. So sorry. <laughs> I was make and I was making a list of questions as people were asking me um, about things Heidi was doing, and I was answering them. And you know, I can't multitask like I could 40 years ago. Oh, I anyway, totally did that. <laughs> Anyway, one of the questions that came up several times was the name of the beading thread again, Heidi, and also whether you iron on your crystals. I kind of think you sew everything on, but you might answer those, and then I've got a couple more. Okay, let me unmute myself. So the name of the beading thread that I use is called Silamide. It's S-I-L-M-A-D. Uh-oh. S I okay, it's getting late. No, S I L M A. Oh, I have to pull it out. <laughs> S I L A M I D E. So, for those of you that can order online and stuff, you can actually get a few colors through. Um, y L I was making it for a while. Uh, Fire Mountain Gems carries a few colors in it. That's actually who I order from for my classes because you can get these little cards that are 40-yard cards. Myself, I go to my local bead shop um, up in Port Townsend, and I buy it by a spool which has like uh, 900 yards on it, but you don't want that because it'll take you forever to use it. It comes in various colors. If you order from that huge, we're so lucky to have it in our state, huge beading online bead place called Shipwreck Beads. They're in Olympia or Lacey, Washington. They carry it just in black and white. But um, it actually, just to give you a little background on Philamide, it was created for the tailoring industry and it has been around for years. It is a wax nylon thread that doesn't break. And I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna digress a little bit to give you a reason why to use it. So from me making garments from uh, back in the late 90s and into the sulky challenges and stuff, I was having trouble with embellishments falling off, you know, if, you, if when I, because I would wear them. And I found that 
using the plain old thread that uh, threads just weren't strong enough. And you think about the things that you buy in the store, in the commercial store for the holidays, why do the sequins and the beads and stuff fall off? Is because they're using a thread that's not meant to be. Beads, the process of making beads, some of them can be sharp on the edge and will actually cut your thread. So they, anyway, use silamide beads, right? If you can find it, if, you know, shoot me or Michelle an email and we'll remind you of what the thread is. I'm sorry, Patty, I forgot the other question. That's okay. We're kind of getting short on time, and I know Michelle's got a lot to cover. So we'll put all these in the PDF for everybody, and all the questions will get answered tomorrow. Thank Great. you, Heidi. Thanks. Okay, thanks ladies. So uh, let me show you another 3D leaf technique that kind of keeps in line with the technique that uh, Heidi showed you uh, earlier. And this technique uses our iron-on transfer pens. Now I know a lot of you aren't really sure how to use these and we're going to give you a little crash course here. Um, this is a permanent ink and it's permanent when you draw or write with it and it's permanent when it transfers. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, and it does transfer easily with the heat from a hot iron. It's very important because it is a permanent ink to protect your work surface. And what you need to do is kind of get this pen ready to, um, to do its magic. And we recommend that you use a scrap piece of paper. It doesn't need to be a full sheet like I have here. And you're going to um, shake the pen with the cap on. Yeah, we've done some decorating in some of our rooms and have some nice little splotches on the walls that will not wash away. So you shake the, the pen with the lid on and you're going to prime the pen by pushing down on the tip. So the tip's going to submerge into the pen and in the barrel of the pen is like an ink well and you'll form a little dot of ink and you'll know that your pen is ready to get to work. Then you're going to take an outline, and it, you know, in this case I used a leaf to keep in tradition with uh, Heidi. And to be perfectly honest here, I did use another type of marker so that you could really see this line, but you would trace on your leaf. Now if the size matters to you, you might, might want to trace inside or just outside of your line so that it will be precise. And you can even... Uh, maybe give your kids these um, iron-on transfer pens and they can draw and you can in turn transfer their drawing onto a, a shirt or a towel or something like that. So let me tell you how to do that. Again, you want to protect your ironing surface um, and it will go through, it can go through uh, the fabric and make a nice um, transfer on your ironing board. I, I did that too. And uh, the first thing you need to do is prepare your fabric to receive the transfer. And what we mean by that is you want to take your iron. Iron, um, and you want a hot iron. You don't want something that's just warm. And it needs to be your your receiving surface fabric needs to be able to tolerate a hot iron. And you just want to warm that up. Get it nice and warm. And then you're going to place the transfer with the 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 trace side face down on your fabric and you need to decide if you want the transfer to be on the right side or the wrong side of your fabric. It can go, it can go on either side. You just have to keep in mind that the, the transfer is permanent. And you're going to press and hold your iron in place for a few seconds. Let's just say five seconds. And you know we always tell you to test first. So once you tried it out and have done the press and you want to check your transfer. You don't want to just pick up that piece of paper and start moving on because maybe you didn't um, hold it down long enough. Maybe your iron wasn't quite hot enough and you just want to gently lift up one of the corners of your paper so that you can see how the iron um, has worked and how your transfer is progressing. Now you do not want to slide your iron across the paper because you risk the chance of shifting the paper which will cause you to have like a blurred transfer. 
And they're really, it's really that easy to do. You can do multiple transfers with just one tracing. You could uh, put that tracing away and bring it out a month later and it's still going to transfer for you. So this is a really cool project or product. And if you have it in your resource center, as Ellen Osten calls it, you'll be really glad that you did when, when, you, when the time comes and you need something like this. Now, I just use plain fabric for my sample here, but if you wanted to use a pretty fabric and have your leaf beautiful on both sides, you can use the Saki KK2000 to secure two layers of fabric together once you've done the transfer. And I point that out after you've done the transfer because the heat from your iron will dissipate the Saki KK2000. So once you've applied that, you can cut out your leaves, which you will have a pretty front and a pretty back. And this is just is really, really cool. And it's why I like this technique so much. It's not um, published in any of our books. You're going to take your leaves and you're going to place them on a piece of Saki Solvi stabilizer. And Solvi stabilizer is our lightest wash away stabilizer. And then you're going to place a second layer of Solvi right on top of that. And guess what you're going to do next? Next you're going to use a warm dry iron and it's going to seal those two layers together. It's almost like a heat and seal. And this is just so cool. I really love this technique. I was amazed when I learned how to do it and it really does work. Now you might be asking yourself, why in the world are we doing this? Well, that's because you want to um, finish off the raw edge and Heidi did such a fantastic job um, explaining to you about setting up uh, your machine that I really don't have to go over that too much but you're going to zigzag around the raw edge of your machine. Now this machine that I use does not have a satin stitch so I um, used a small zigzag and I went around a couple times. The most important thing that you need to keep in mind is make sure that the swing of your needle is just uh, barely off the raw edge of your leaf. Oops. I was a little stuck there. And here I've shown you a picture of the zigzags in different widths around the, um, the leaf. And it's the, um, the Solvi allows your feed dog something to grip a hold of so that you can work your way around the leaves instead of you wouldn't be able to do it if you didn't have the Solvi there. So this is a really cool technique that I just absolutely love. Real quick, I want to let you know that we have nine workshops that are available where we can come out to your quilt guild or to your store and offer these classes. And I wanted to point this out because we do offer one that's a 3D applique uh, quilted zipper pouch which has several of the leaf techniques in it. If you want more information about this, visit our website or you can contact Michelle Perez um, at the number listed here at Saki and that number is available on our website as well. Here's a few um, pictures of projects that I pulled out of the book, fun with Salky cotton blendables and solid color cotton threads that kind of fall in line with the um, techniques that you've learned today. I really love this lace shawl. It's made out of um, cotton blendables thread. And if you didn't know, you can feed uh, a cotton blendables thread through your serger and create your own yarn. And that's Carol Ingram there. She's uh, stitching up a um, nice scarf using made from thread also that she's actually knitting. As I told you a little earlier, I have a little bit of embroidery in this program tonight and we are giving you a free design. It's a download from the Salky Embroidery Club. We'll provide you with a link to that when you receive our email later on this week. Um, and it's the maple leaf. 
So some of you um, I know are just beginning to learn how to do um, embroidery and I want to give you a quick overview of how to stitch out this because it's super duper easy. One of my favorite techniques is free standing lace and you're going to lay, uh, hoop your machine with just one layer of the Salky Ultra Salvy Stabilizer and that is our heaviest uh, wash away stabilizer and this stuff really takes a pounding as you can see it's hooped in my machine there it's pretty thick because it's uh, has you can barely see through it and in order to do this leaf I threaded my machine both top and bobbin using the 30 weight Salky cotton blendables in addition uh, you do want to use a 9014 top stitch quilting or embroidery needle when working with the 30 weight thread. You just push go and your machine will stitch out this perfect leaf. Um, we have a lot of colors that are just suitable for the fall. You'll trim away the excess ultra solvy, leaving just a little bit extra around the edge and then you're going to soak it. You don't necessarily have to soak it for an hour. Patty or Heidi said that she soaked her leaves for about 10 minutes and that would work too if you wanted to have like a, a little bit of form to it so that you can shape it but otherwise if you soak it this long it will be so soft I was just really impressed with how that turned out so you know I really really wish that Sue Hausman was here to talk to you about embroidery Zen and well guess what I am here <laughs> Oh, Hello everybody. I'm here. I'm here. You know, I'm so excited. I've been oh my gosh, Heidi. Oh Heidi, your work is so fabulous. I can't it's just great. I want to make some of those beautiful leaves. Oh. But basically I would love to share with you a little bit about Zen as quickly as I can because it's a program that has been taught by specialized sulky educators at hotels and local stores around the country for several years. I've been one of those educators. And now the thing is we couldn't get to every area. We couldn't get to every embroiderer wanting to learn. So now you can take this course on online, both of the Zen 1 and 2, or better yet, the combo. And I've been doing some online classes, but I have to tell you that a lot of them are focused on one brand of a machine. Ellen and I on this in these classes actually worked with three different brands of machines and tried to relate this as you could do it on your machine. For example, all of the Zen 1 projects are done in a 4x4 hoop, so you could do it with the most basic embroidery machine out there, but for those of you with bigger hoops, we gave techniques for combining designs as well and one of the things taught in Zen 1 is how to make the biggest design possible, in other words, any size, and we'll talk about that with hooping and the way to do it. But the value on this is truly amazing because you get not just one or two classes on embroidery, you actually get a whole course of embroidery education, not just a specific class. And it's all designed to build. So you start with class one and it builds on itself and it teaches you all types of different techniques. And what you get, you get these video classes. Now, you not only get to watch them, but you get to download them. So on any other classes I've seen online, you watch them and, and you use them when you're online. But in this case, you actually download, well, not only the videos, classes, you download the manual, you download all the designs, you download all the project ideas, all the instructions, the inspiration. So it's yours, and it's yours to keep and yours to keep for life, basically. You can have it forever. But I will tell you, people have asked me how long the classes are. And what I love about this, this is we weren't limited. It wasn't like a TV show you had to stop or like a certain class you had to stop. We took the time that was needed to present the class clearly and to work you step by step through each of the techniques. So here's the exciting part. You're not just doing techniques, you're also making projects at the same time. And I want to tell you that so many of these projects are gifts that you could give and ideas for gifts and the designs are fabulous. Well, truth is, you're going to have lots of things to give this holiday season. 
when you take your Zen classes, no question. Um, the combo pack, which I really believe is the greatest value, where you get both Zen 1 and Zen 2, all the bonus videos, everything, all the bonus designs, it includes 27 designs that are with the projects, but 20 plus bonus designs, and you also receive several monogram font design sets, so you can do monogram towels and monogram pillows, and there's even a font set specially for puffy foam. Over 20 projects, you can see the pictures on the website, go to sulky.com, click on Zen and scroll down, you got to keep scrolling down, skip the video with Ellen and me, scroll down and see the great projects. They're all in the combo, all the projects in Zen 1 and Zen 2. And the greatest thing, all the kits and, well, the blanks are available for these projects. You can get the blanks and there's also a stabilizer kit, you can go to the site and learn all about that. Now the big question always is, well, how much is this going to cost me? Because I know you guys want value. And the Embroidery Zen 1 and 2, the regular price is $2.99 and there is a special code for $75 off. So tonight, each one of those, if you want Zen 1 or Zen 2, is $224. 12 classes, 9 projects, all those designs, many techniques that you can do with a 4x4 hoop, of course. But I also want to share the combo because when you register and purchase the Sulky Embroidery Zen combo, this is a huge value. Normally $598, $600. And you're going to save $250. So that works out to $16. $15.50 per class. Now, where can you take a complete class that's a part of a growing course that teaches you everything you need to know about embroidery for $16.50? I don't think anywhere. Uh, and of course, we take Visa, MasterCard, you could use any of your cards to do so if you're ready. The minute you download these, you're ready to stitch. So I would recommend, and by the way, the price of the combo, $349, again, $16.50 about per class, plus all the extra stuff. You can't imagine how many great designs you get and what you'll be using them all for. So go to sulky.com, click on Zen 1, 2, or if you click on the combo, it's all set to give you the discount. Watch the video if you like, but jump, up, jump below the video and click on Register Now and follow the instructions. And I want to tell you, embroiderers all over the country that have been to Zen have said, this is fabulous. I learned more about my machine and more about embroidery than I've learned in all the years I've owned it. So download and begin watching and stitching on your own machine at your own speed in your own home immediately. Happy sewing, everybody. Well, thank you, Sue, so much. And if you sign up for Zen 1 or 2, use the uh, Salky Zen 75 code to save your $75. And there's no code required when you sign up for the combo. So thank you. And you're so right about learning so much about your sewing machine. So taking a look at my clock, it's uh, for after the hour and I'm going to go ahead and make an executive decision to hold our next um, door prize drawing and Patty I'm gonna have to ask for your assistance I know I'm surprising you with this but if you can go ahead and select a name for me and just chime in when you're ready um, I would appreciate that my mouse has seemed to disappear so we, <laughs> See? We, See, there's a mouse, mouse disease tonight, I'm telling you. <laughs> I had to wake it up again. Okay, I'm, I'm scrolling through, and I feel like Vanna, and the lucky winner is Kim Harrington. Kim Harrington, are you out there? If you are, please send me an email at sockywebinar at gmail.com and give me your mailing address. I would appreciate that so much, and congratulations, Kim. Well, I had a poem all written out for you all, and another executive decision. I'm going to save it till the very end and kind of skim over these two slides. That way, if you need to go, we totally understand. We value your time. As you see here, these are two two close-up shots of the 12 weight and the 30 weight thread. The 12 weight is readily identifiable because it has that 
orange label at the top. Um, that's really important when you're selecting your thread. And I like these spools of thread because they tell you which size needle to use at the top. But for the 12 weight, we highly recommend that you use a slightly larger needle. The 116 needle is, Jean's needle is perfect for uh, working with the 12 weight thread. Here's a close-up of a comparison of the 30 weight and the 12 weight. There is yet a subtle difference, but there definitely is a difference in the stitch out. And the blendables has random color changes that occur every two and a half to five inches. And these are different than variegated thread because of that. These um, are random. And as you can see in this picture, um, pick a color and, and take a look at it. You might be looking at uh, the white at the top. Now locate another section of white thread and you're going to notice that that is slightly sh uh, shorter or not as wide as another section. And that's what we mean by the random color changes occurring every two and a half to five inches. This thread is absolutely beautiful to work with. And if you ever come to one of our booths, please bring your fabric with you and lay your thread out on the fabric so that you can take a look at it. Oftentimes when people come into the booth, I'll lay out their, the, the thread that they're looking at in the 12 weight so the colors are very, very visible and on the black um, tablecloth so that they can really get a good look at that. And please ask for our help because there's 126 colors available. You can buy them individually. They're available in three different collections and they're also available in other collections such as Heidi's Life in the Tropics. So we'll help you find the thread you need and let you make the final decision what color works best for you. But Blendables threads are absolutely beautiful. Every uh, webinar I show you this chart and it shows you where the uh, cotton blendables in the 30 weight and the 12 weight fall on this continuum as it pertains to weight. Remember, your machine, uh, the standard industry, industry standard is 40 weight. So these are slightly heavier than the 40 weight thread. And that's why Heidi told you earlier that you might have to reduce your tension because now the thread's getting a little thicker. Just to recap, Cap our special for the rest of the for the week, 35% uh, off your entire purchase from the Salky Embroidery Club using the code S U L W E B 35. And everything on the Salky website is also 30% uh, off when you use the code S U L W E B 30. But we've set up this special page for you that just pulls out the products that we featured here this evening. Um, and these codes do expire one week from now, the 23rd, at 3 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Patty, you're back up with Seasons with Salky. And my mouse is live and ready. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just completed the Seasons with Selke course and, and it was beyond fun. Everybody did just such amazing projects and everybody was intimidated going in. They thought, oh my gosh, this looks so hard, this looks so artistic. What? How could I possibly do this? But boy, I, I cannot tell you how great some of those Garden Gate projects and the Seasons calendars came out. They were just spectacular. Um, Kelly is going to do a blog on that at some point and show you some of the really nice, well they were all nice, but some really special ones that we found in our in our group. And everybody felt they were going completely out of their box, that this was not something they were comfortable with. And then at the end everybody said, oh I'm so glad I did this, this was so much fun, I never thought I could do it. And they did it and they had a great deal of fun. Now you'll see both versions of the Garden Gate there, you only are required if you're going for certification and you don't have to, you can just take it for fun. You're only required to do the small version and only one season. So it's very doable in the six or eight week time frame there without a problem. And the 
price point is terrific, $99, and then with your code, it brings it down to $74. It's just, you will have a great time. And these people are social when they get in there. You will make friends, you will learn things. I think that uh, this is probably the most exciting offering we've ever had because it's so reasonable and everybody can take it. So I hope you'll join us. We've got another class starting October 5th. And um, I know it's going to be just as much fun as the last one. So please join us if you can. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. And she's so right about stepping outside of your comfort zone to try some new techniques because that's really how, how you learn. You have to experiment in order to learn and have new techniques under your belt. So we've already done our door prize drawing, and we're wrapping up here. If you'd like to stay um, until uh, like after the show, I will share my poem. It's quite quirky, and I hope to see you there. Kelly, are you out there? I sure am. This has been such a great Hi. webinar. Oh, I've got I've learned so much myself. I'm so inspired to do some free motion leaves now. Good, good. Me too. Oh, um, I also just wanted to point out, um, I just want to talk about seasons for another second really quickly is because I've seen the pictures and I've worked on the blog post about this latest seasons with Sulky Class and oh my goodness, the comments that we have gotten about how people have said, I didn't think I could do it, but Ellen made it so, I was so sure I could after watching those videos, and they were so glad about all they learned, and the art that people had created, wow, it was just fantastic, so it was really great, but I also wanted to let people know that on my blog, Express Yourself with Sulky, which is just blog.sulky.com, we have always got lots of great projects, and one of the two things we're doing this month, one for the um, National Sewing Month, which is September, we are highlighting some of the charities that we support. We're doing that every week, but we're also highlighting some Halloween projects. I love Halloween. I don't know if you're if you're like me, but oh my goodness, I look forward to it every year. My kids always dress up. We live in one of those neighborhoods where we have tons and tons of trick or treaters, and so I've got lots of Halloween projects. I'm giving you one every week, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm giving you one every week from now until Halloween, and we have a Halloween boutique set up on Sulky.com with specials and packages of thread, as well as all kinds of different things. I'm going to do a blog about the stick and carve to show you how easy it is. My 10-year-old was is able to do an amazing design with, with stick and carve because it's such a great product to carve your pumpkins. And uh, if, you, if you don't want to wait for the blog post, head over to the Halloween Boutique on Sulky.com. You can look at the products. And uh, you can, and if you, every week, like I said, I'll have a new tutorial and a new thing talking about Halloween. Thanks, Kelly. I took a look at the boutique, and it's really cute, and I like its boutique. That's really fun. Clever. <laughs> Isn't it fun? Isn't it fun? And I've got, I've got some handwork projects coming up. I'm furiously trying to finish them, as well as some, the machine, and, uh, and you're just going to love it. I just love everything in there. I love Halloween. <laughs> well, thank you. It's nice to hear from you. People see uh, your newsletters and they see your pictures, but we haven't had you on here just yet. So thank you for talking about the social media and what's new with Salky. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, this is our very last slide, and I'm going to leave it up while I uh, read my poem, and you're more than welcome to stick around for that. Again, 30% off your purchase of $50 or more. There's the link to our uh, special uh, page for the webinar, and you can use the code SAWKEY, uh, scratch that, S-U-L-W-E-B-30. And then you get 35% off your entire purchase from the Salky Embroidery Club when you use the code SULWEB35. And I forgot to put the expiration date as next Tuesday, the 23rd, at 3 a.m. Eastern Time. And 
and also there's the codes for the online classes. So we hope that um, you enjoyed our webinar this evening and I'm going to read my poem. We still have a number of people online and this is kind of quirky and um, I'm going to ask my Peanuts Gallery, which is the organizers and my two special guests to turn themselves off mute so they can be my audience and help me gauge reading this out loud. And I haven't shared this with many people. So do I have my Peanuts Gallery available? <laughs> We're here to support yep, you. Yep, you're here to get it. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Michelle. So <laughs> let me give you the backstory to this. I had taken myself off of caffeine, not intentionally, for like a week because I just didn't have time to go out to the store and get my leaded tea bags. And then I finally went shopping, and that evening I was like, boy, I really like a cup of hot tea. And I looked at the the leaded stuff, and I said, you know, it just might keep me awake. Ah, go ahead. <laughs> so I stayed up like the entire night, like till like five o'clock in the morning, and I had this idea. It's something I've been wanting to do, and it's a tribute to Salky Cotton Blendables thread. Now it starts out kind of corny, but it gets a little better. <laughs> you know, Salky Cotton Blendables thread is the best thing since sliced bread. If not, there's a book, Fun with Salky Cotton Blendables and Solid Color Cotton Thread. It's filled with lots of sewing inspiration for your next sewing vacation. Many of my friends make me irritated when they call blendables variegated. As a Salky National <laughs> Educator, <laughs> I hear the chuckling. As a Salky National Educator, it's my duty to educate them about its beauty. <laughs> Random color changes is what makes blendables unique. It adds pizzazz to every technique. Whatever you can dream, handwork and embroidery, quilting, top stitching, decorative stitches, even surgery or embroidery by machine. I must point out that this thread is decorative so using it for embellishing, that's creative. <laughs> Did, yeah, clever. <laughs> <laughs> that cute. Did you know that it has color changes that are random? Unless you knew, you couldn't fathom. <laughs> the colors change randomly every two and a half to five inches. This adds a spark of creativity to your stitches. Remember to elongate your stitch length. It gives the blendables color more strength. Say goodbye to the predictable striped effect. A new kind of thread is going to be on your next project. The blendables name is perfect. This kind of thread deserves a lot of respect. We recommend you lay a bit of blendables over a swatch of fabric you'll see that the colors are really dynamic. First you see blue, then you see ecru. A batik fabric really shows off to green, and you'll love the subtleties of the cream. It's a premier quality thread made from Egyptian cotton, like what's on my bed. <laughs> <laughs> It's getting late or early. <laughs> Known for its warm, soft, matte colors that have a natural look and feel, this thread is really ideal. Blendables is available. Blendables thread has 126 amazing selections that are available individually or in three collections. Wound on king and jumbo spools. Oh my, I'm starting to drool. Yes. Blendables is a wonderful addition to every sewing room. Life's too short to sew in a vacuum. I'm on a roll. Don't go away. There's more I need to say. Blendables kind of has two personalities, you see. There are two weights to show off its incredible originality. 
12 weight is heavier. You can tell that it has an orange label that's its identifier. Used with a needle size 16100, specifically a denim or jeans needle is highly recommended. 30 weight is a bit lighter. Recall that chart that shows it's finer? The 30 weight thread requires a needle size 9014. One that's designed for top stitching, quilting, or embroidery. Yeah, that'll keep the needle clean. This information is to be considered a starting reference. Your fabric and stabilizer will have an influence. Your next project might be part of a round robin. It doesn't matter where you place the thread, top or bobbin. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, I'm ready for a Budweiser. I don't know about the rest of you. <laughs> uh, it's important to remember, though, don't mate the 12 weight. <laughs> it can't be in both places at once, or your, your machine will make some obscene grunts. <laughs> <laughs> like your audience? <laughs> a spare oh, bobbin is often suggested when the bobbin tension needs to be adjusted. <laughs> I just shared this quirky poem with all my sewing friends near and far during the September 2015 Sewing Online with Saki webinar. Woo Good job. Good job, Michelle. Okay. We're going to keep you off caffeine for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can tell. You're on East Coast time. I can tell. You're <laughs> getting, getting, all of you are getting rummy. Yeah, we haven't even had supper here in Arizona yet. Oh, me oh. neither. <laughs> It's past my ice cream time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine too. I like that. Ice cream time is a great idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially after after the webinar. Such a great treat. Well, we had quite a few people stick around for my, my poem. I wonder if I have any comments here. Oh, I can't. I don't know where my mouse is. I heard wonderful poem, clap, clap. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So I'm glad my computer didn't crash at the very end of the webinar like it did. Um, apple pie time. Yay. <laughs> so, well, class is dismissed. We appreciate everybody joining us. And thank you, Peanuts Gallery. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs>